Can Ravens offensive line really be fixed? Will the Ravens continue to use Marlon Humphrey as a traveling corner to take out the opponent's best receiver? What were some of the biggest things that went wrong against the Raiders? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Two, team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and another episode of nfl questions from subs a series where you can ask me any nfl question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon i appreciate y'all shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons but really shout out to everybody uh thank you so much because everybody sent their question to the right place and i was like wow this is crazy I seriously couldn't believe it. Like usually 99% of people send it to the right email, but 100% of everybody sent it to the correct place. So thank you for making the process so much smoother. It makes everything easier when you do that. So I love y'all. Team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions as we always do. I'm recording this on September 15th. So this is the very first episode of Question From Subscribers that comes after the loss to the Raiders. And before the game against KC. Either way, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got some good questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Harry H. And appreciate you being a patron, too. He said, thanks for everything you do, Engraven. You really are like a therapist for us Ravens fans. <laughs> I don't know. If I'm your therapist, then y'all are in some bad shape. <laughs> I don't know. I appreciate it. He said that. My question is, after the loss to the Raiders, do you believe we have an offensive line problem? Yes. Yes. But that wasn't even his, uh, his, his question. He said, do you think we have an offensive line problem that can be fixed or will end up costing us even more games this season? Um, oh, it, it, it's tough because Ravens are in a very tough uh, situation. Now, one thing that we can all hope for and hope it just changes is that the offensive line just gels a little bit more and they all, they all just play better. With Ronnie Stanley, we can expect him to play better. We expected him to be a little bit rusty, you not know, as rusty as he was on Monday night, but we expected him to be a little rough. We expected there to be growing pains with the offensive line. Um, but if these guys can all get better, they can all jail better, they can all perform better, they can all use better technique. Shout out to my guy, Cam Neal. But um, they have an opportunity to be a lot better than what we saw uh, on Monday night against the Raiders. Now, remember, that was only one game, and hopefully that remains just one game and doesn't continue for the remaining 16 games. But we won't know till we know. Now, as far as... um. Is it a problem that can be fixed? Hopefully they can fix the problem from within, but they're limited on their options when it comes to fixing the problem from without. Uh, you got guys like Mitchell Schwartz. You got guys like Rick Wagner. You got free agent guys that are out there. And some people might say like, oh, well, there's a reason that they're, that they're out there as a free agent. That is not the case. I used to think that way myself. Like, oh, man, this person's a free agent for a reason because nobody wants them. They might be sorry. But in 2019, I was quickly reminded uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. Because the Ravens, LJ Fort and Josh Bynes, they were both free agents. They were both sitting out there and thinking like, oh, uh, okay. And LJ Fort was somebody who I didn't even know about. So I'm thinking like, oh, okay. They picked up those two underwhelming moves, but all right, let's see. And they both end up being huge for the Ravens. And now they're both back on the Ravens. We, of course, know LJ Fort is unfortunately out for the year, but Josh Bynes is on the Ravens practice squad. So you never know how things could work out. Next question came from my guy, Lee P, who is also a patron. I appreciate it. He said, hey, bro, your reaction to the Avery pick was epic. Thanks for another great moment on Engraven TV. Nah, man, that thing was just crazy, though, man. I just... It was crazy that we, I knew we had a tiny, 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 tiny chance that something happening. Uh, and when it actually happened, I was like, oh, we, okay, we got to do this thing now. But it was just crazy enough that it actually happened. Too bad they couldn't capitalize. But he said, questions. Uh, Anthony Averitt looks great so far, but why does Away wear that brace on his arm? Do you know if he's injured? Somebody else asked the same thing a couple weeks ago. I don't know. I haven't heard of any injury. He hasn't reported any injury. There haven't been known to be any injury with him. So I wouldn't even worry about it. I, I don't know what it's for, but yeah, I saw the, the little brace that he got up there. I, I, I wouldn't worry about it. And he said, she said, should they consider uh, Ely um, at right tackle due to Alejandro Villanueva's struggles? Um, it's too early. It's too early. I know he, blew, he looked bad. He, he looked really bad on Monday night. But it's one game. Let's see if this is a consistent thing first, because that's one thing, whether things are good, whether things are bad, we got to look for consistency. We don't want to just pull the plug if things aren't going right after one shot. 
Some stuff takes time. Some people really got to get into a rhythm, really got to get into their groove uh, in order to do better. So let's keep that in mind with Alejandro Villanueva and just really all the Ravens. And then because we got to think, think, let's put ourselves in their shoes. If we like our first time driving, I know my first time driving, I, it wasn't that good, man. Uh, it was actually pretty nice. Though. But overall, it wasn't that good. It could have been a lot better. Um, and, and now my first time trying to parallel park, because I remember when I got my learner's license in Maryland, oh, they and, and parallel parking is a part of it. My first time trying to do that, oh, big yikes. But what if the teacher, what if the, uh, the driving teacher, the driving instructor, what if she only graded me on my first time trying to learn how to parallel park and never gave me another opportunity again? She was like, all right, man, all right, engraving, if, if, if you, uh, you, you can't parallel park this time, then you're done. It's the same thing with Alejandro Villanueva. Yeah, it was tough watching that, but got to give him another chance. I mean, we ain't got no choice because Ravens are going to regardless. Uh, and he also said, Bowser was really quiet on Monday. Can you see his starting spot getting taken by away or Dalen Hayes this season? Peace and blessings. <laughs> Again, same thing applies to this. Same thing. It's one game. It's one game. Everybody's not going to be hot every single game. We got to give people opportunities. We got to give people a chance. Um, so we got to just hold off on the rash decisions. Uh, that's what we got. We got to think it through. <laughs> it's going to take some time. It's a long season. Next question came from my boy, John R., who is also a patron. Appreciate it. He said, with Chandler Jones, <laughs> with Chandler Jones having contract issues with the Cardinals, uh, should the Ravens try and trade for him? I know it's a long shot, but just like the Bucks, the cap is cap. You should have said the Chiefs or you should have said the Saints, too. Uh, but anyway, he said they can find a way to make it work. I believe that the defense's biggest problem is the pass rush, and we can definitely use him. Same thing. Same answer from the last question. Consistency. It's been one game. It's been one game. We've seen Justin Houston, who looked decent early on. He slowed down a bit to the end. Uh, but Adafi away, he looked good. It's, it's, it's about patience. That was just one game against the Raiders. Let's see if, this, if a, the pass rush being a problem is consistent before we try to just, again, blow everything up or try to get this guy, that guy. I mean, Chandler Jones will be nice. You gonna come to the Ravens and get five sacks a game? Oh, hey, bring it on! But um, we just gotta wait. And I mean, Chandler Jones, I think right now, yeah, the cap is cap. They could find some ways to do some things, but they they struggling for money right now. Uh, they had to do some uh, some restructuring of a few guys. Um, so I, I don't think Chandler Jones would be uh, in their plans. Next question came from my guy Nick Brick. And shout out to you for being a patron. Appreciate it. He said, I'm asking this a bit later. And it may be answered by what we see on Monday night. Okay, so he asked it before the game. He said, but with Marcus Peters going down, do we finally see Marlowe become a traveling corner where he's locked on to the other teams? Number one, like with other elite corners. Uh, we've seen him do this on and off. But I'm wondering if this is the season we see him take that next step, like a Stephon Gilmore or a Jalen Ramsey. Uh, and then the following day, he said, uh, he, he added this to it. He said, I felt like Marlowe should have been on Waller the whole time. I agree. Uh, a lot of teams are willing to live and die with their best player. Yes, and the Raiders sure, surely did that. Uh, and I can live and die with Marlowe on the best receiver each week. Oh, man. Um, so to answer your question, I mean, yeah, it, it did start to get answered last night. They had Marlon traveling, but not just traveling with Darren Waller. He was on Renfro. He was on Ruggs. He was on a little bit of everybody. And when he was on them, he took them out the game. Now, we do wish, and this wasn't even just in hindsight, but this was in foresight too, but this was even during the game. We do wish that they would have kept Marlon. Well, I wish. I can't say we. I personally wish they would have kept Marlon Humphrey on Darren Waller the whole game to just take him out of it because – Darren, they went to this guy, what, 19 or 21 times? Some crazy high number like that. They kept throwing at Darren Waller. They force-fed Darren Waller. So, it, and, and he was obviously their best player. We all, we all knew going into the game he was their best player. And Raven, uh, Raven still didn't find a way to take him out the game. And that was, that was frustrating to watch. Um, it was just, it was really frustrating. Uh, but anyway, I don't even want to get into that. But Marlon, I, I could definitely see him starting to travel a little bit. Uh, just to sort of help the defense and really try to take out whoever the other team's number one guy is. But we'll start to see that. We'll really see if that question is answered this week against the Chiefs. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Mm. Next question came from my guy Irwin, who's also a patron. Appreciate it. Uh, he said, hey, this question in reference to this game, why not attempt to get the first down at the end of the fourth? Uh, the way I see it, we attempt to get the first to ice the game. 
If we get it, we can continue to run the clock and kick the game with a field goal. If we don't get it, it's a turnover on downs, and the Raiders don't have timeouts anyway, and it would have went to overtime. It's strategy with a greater reward than risk. I don't know about that because we see what the Raiders did with no timeouts, with 37 seconds left, something like that. They moved the ball all the way down the field. So had the Ravens went for it on that fourth down at the end of the game, because it was a tie game, had they went for it on that fourth down and got it, okay, yeah, they could have killed the clock and kicked the game when the field goal, great. But if they didn't get it, I don't think they trusted their defense to make, to, to make a stop on the Raiders. I thought that after Justin Tucker field goal, I was thinking, okay, I was scared, but I was still like, okay, Ravens, come on, make one of them plays and just let's end it. But no, they didn't. So I, I, I can understand why the Ravens kicked the field goal there because they, they just wanted to get ahead. They could have went for it. They could have made it. They, they could have went for the fourth down and could have made it, but they also could have. Everything that happened in the game could have still happened w without the Ravens kicking that go-ahead field goal, and then they would have lost in regulation. All right, next question came from my guy Martin M., and shout out to you for being the patron. He said, hey, Graven, I hope all is well with you. After watching the Thursday game between the Cowboys and the Bucks, I noticed both of these teams are stacked at wide receiver and wonder if the Ravens could or be willing to trade for one of these wide receivers. I know you don't have the answer to this, but it's fun to speculate. Oh, it always is. I uh, said, I really think the Ravens could make a trade for Mike Evans. The Bucks didn't seem to hardly use him. I think their depth at wide receiver, with their depth at wide receiver, they will be willing to part ways with him. Oh, no, they certainly wouldn't because they just restructured his deal. So they signed him to a big deal last year, and then this year they restructured it. So no, he would not be going anywhere. With Chris Godwin, I believe they franchise tagged him, and then they came to a contract agreement with him too. Antonio Brown, you know he loves it there. They love him there too. Tom Brady loves Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown loves Tom Brady. They got a connection. He ain't going nowhere. So, no. I mean, if the Ravens wanted Scotty Miller maybe, but... Nah, that, uh-uh. Bucks, like, even though that they didn't use Mike Evans uh, much, that mo give credit to the Cowboys, too. Give credit to the Cowboys for sort of taking him out the game for the most part. Now, trust me, he will be used throughout the season. That was just one game. So that one game doesn't determine the entirety of the season. So, um, no, I, I don't think that they would trade anybody from him. And then uh, even with the, uh, the Cowboys, because you said both teams stacked the wide receiver. Uh, the Cowboys, Amari Cooper, that dude, I, I heard, like, Amari Cooper, he's not somebody whose game I really watched too much over the years. I know he got drafted by the Raiders. He did his thing there a little bit, and he's actually from Miami, too. Huh? I got to watch him more. But anyway, um, he did his thing with the Raiders, but with the Cowboys, uh, recently I've just been hearing about how great of a route runner he is. Oh, man, this dude is such a great route runner. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I guess I'll see. But during the game, I was like, oh, oh that, that's what they're talking about. I see it. Um, so he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and um, Michael Gallup, that's, that had been a name that a lot of people, uh, and there was a lot of speculation surrounding him, uh, possibly to the Ravens if they were looking to trade for somebody, but that obviously didn't work itself out. And um, not that there were any rumors that it was going to happen, just speculation and stuff. Um, and, uh, and then you know CeeDee Lamb ain't going nowhere. He definitely ain't going nowhere. And I, I hate it. I told y'all last year before the draft, Started watching a bunch of CD Lamb, started watching Rugs, uh, started watching Jerry Judy, and I, I I hate that I did that to myself because I'm like, man, I want the Ravens to get one of them. And it was said that the Ravens tried to trade up and I think get Rugs, I think, but it obviously didn't happen. Next question on this episode came from my boy Justin C. And Justin, appreciate you being a patron. Uh, he said, wow, what a game and how disappointing. Hope all is well. Engraven got a quick question. Seeing all these letters and this is, is not a quick question. But anyway, he said, um, uh, got a quick question after seeing the first game and having time to mull it over. There were some good things, but too much bad for me. Three things I felt like were a problem, but my question is basically, what do you think of my opinion or do you agree or have a different take? All right, here we go. Number one, all game, Crosby ate us alive and the offensive line was atrocious and there seemed like too much confusion pre-snap on, on too many plays. Don't know if this is coaching or players. Um, it could be both. Could be both. Um, it could be not having guys coached up properly. It could be youth inexperience. Because remember, we had Tyson Williams out there. I saw sometimes when Trenton Cannon would be out there and Lamar would have to instruct him like, no, you need to go over there. You need to be here, whatnot. Latavius Murray, very inexperienced with the offense. So I think that could be a, a huge part of it. And it could also be on the coaches. They may not have these guys coached up in time. But then at the same time, you got to think and, and you got to realize that 
with a lot of these guys in this offense, mainly at the running back position being new, that it's hard to just install a, a, a game plan for these because they just they all just got here. Besides Tyson Williams, but Cannon just got here. Murray just got like they they are fresh, so it's it's really hard to judge them uh, for how good or how bad they would fit into this offense based off of that game. Like that game, yeah, it didn't all look so well. At least Latavius Murray didn't look so good. Uh, but we just we just got to give it time. We we got to give it time. Um, so yeah, it could be on either one though. He said, number two, the game plan or scheme seemed like it was so basic and not playing to our strengths. It felt like, what are the Ravens trying to prove playing like this? Uh, I think they really wanted to show that they could, they could throw that ball around the field. Um, and it's like a lot of us already knew Lamar could throw the ball all over the field. But I think they did. I think they did play a little bit of prove it ball. But at the same time, um, I think like it, it got to a point where they just, I mean, the offensive line, I think they were trying and that offensive line just man it it was rough and it it just it it broke down so many things uh the offensive line can't block you can't pass if the offensive line can't run block you can't uh run the ball you can't do you can't do anything and for Latavius Murray I know I said that he he just he didn't look so good um but could it be a mix of that again he wasn't comfortable and at the same time he wasn't really getting the blocks we'll see We'll see. We'll, we'll see moving forward. Um, I think it's a little bit of both, um, but it, it was just a rough game. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I have heard that from some other people, too, about the game plan seeming like it was just so basic and just so vanilla and whatnot. And I've seen some people, and, and it's always funny when I hear people say this. They like, it's like they, they don't want to come to terms with reality. Like, hey, maybe the game plan just wasn't that good. Because I've seen people say, oh, we were ho we were holding out, we were holding out the game plan, just because we want to we were, we were planning for the Chiefs. We want to hold it out, and we're gonna save it for the Chiefs, save it for Kansas City. Why would you set yourself up to lose, just to go into another game the following week, where you don't know if you're gonna win or not? But anyway, beats me. Uh, and number three, he said it felt like the Ravens coaching and players had no answers all game for the Ravens wep for the Raiders weapons from first half to second half. Basically, I feel like either coaching was ill prepared, the players were looking past the Raiders and making focus mistakes, or maybe a combination of both. Uh, what do you think about this, man? Um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, there was definitely, I, I, cause I'm, I'm thinking like, there's no way that the Ravens are going to be unprepared for the Raiders this week one, like Harbaugh and them in week one, they just kill it. This was before Wink. This was before Greg Roman, the, the Harbaugh week one, he takes care of business. No matter who the offensive, defensive coordinator, he always take care of business week one. That's his thing. I think going into this, he was like 10 and three, uh, going into week one and week one games. I'm like, oh yeah, we straight. Mm -mm, nah. Mm -mm. And they started off a bit slow And I was thinking, okay, they just got to get in a little rhythm They got to get in a little rhythm And then they started off getting a little better And they, they kept continuing It was like, okay, wait a minute But I, I still didn't feel like Lamar was like all the way there yet And I had said it during the stream too Like, he's getting there, but he ain't all the way there yet He never got all the way there he Never got an opportunity to get all the way there because, again, a quarterback can't, can only do so much if the offensive line ain't doing nothing for him. Um, offensive line, gotta, they, they got to improve big time uh, moving forward. Uh, and, and they will. Like, they got no choice but today. They can't be no worse than they were on, on, on Monday night. They can't be. They absolutely can't be. Um, another thing, too, uh, where he talked about maybe he feels like coaching was ill-prepared or the players were looking past the Raiders. Um, they, they still, it didn't seem as frequent as it had been in the past, but they still did it enough times to where they got to the line of scrimmage and the play clock is five, four, three, it's going down. It's, it's slow. So they got to get these plays in, man. So Lamar can put whoever he going to put in motion. They can get everything set up. They can read the defense and whatnot. They, they got to get these plays in. So that's something that's important. But so moving forward, um, like you, you got to turn this thing around fast because 
You're going up against one of the NFL's best teams. Not just AFC, not just AFC. West. No, no, no. One of the NFL's best teams, one of the NFL's, if not the best quarterback in the NFL, and Patrick Mahomes and them Chiefs. So you better fix this thing and fix it fast. And the last question on this episode, a question from subscribers. Well, I guess this, this was really questions from patrons because he's a patron as well. Uh, came from my guy, Jay Frank. He said, proud of you, bro. I remember them days years ago when getting 100 people in a live stream was a milestone. Now it's 10 times that amount easily. Keep working. Been a subscriber for about five years now, and it's dope seeing your progression uh, from those month days uh, to the YouTube <laughs> Jeff Zrebit. Hey, man, I, I, I appreciate that a lot, man. Man, I, man, you about to make me cry, man. Um, like I always say, man, things just been crazy, man. Things just been crazy from, yeah, from, from the Madden stuff, the, the, the Madden videos back then, man. Um, and just making the, 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 the transition because a lot, of, well, oh, yeah, a lot of y'all probably don't know. I know there's some of y'all that do, but I, I used to, I started off on YouTube doing Madden videos. Um, I would do Madden videos and it was, it was fun initially, but Madden was just something that I just, I could not do it every day. And it just, it made the experience, it made, it started to make Madden feel like, like I was like forced to play it, for, forced to do it. And, and it just, it just wasn't, I, it, it didn't, I didn't like it anymore. So now, now I love playing Madden, but I play it offline. And when people be like, oh, you're going to stream it? I'd be like, no, I'm not streaming it because I want to enjoy it. Um, but because I, I wasn't doing that back then. Uh, but y'all know Ravens, we could talk Ravens all day, every day, man. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> We love Ravens. They we, they take us through some highs. They take us through some lows and everything else, man. They stress us out. They got us going crazy, but we love them and we love it. We love football. Love talking football. It's a lot of fun, man. So I I appreciate you um just being there for being there for the ride, man. Um uh, and just going through everything with us. So thank you for that. I I appreciate it. Um now you said this question. Even though Tyson isn't where he needs to be at pass protection. Should we still stick with him as our number one running back? Um, I I would love if they did it because as a runner, and we just signed Devontae Freeman to the active roster as of the recording of this question. Because I started this episode a question from subs on the 15th, but I'm recording this question on the 16th. Um, so I, I still think they should. I still think they should, but I don't think they will. Because of the pass protection. Um, because he's not a veteran, because uh, I think the Ravens, I don't think the Ravens are going to go young there. I just really don't. I don't. Um, but we'll see. But anyway, he continued. He said, just like how we have Duvernay at punt return instead of the safe choice in pro Oh, I love the way he's doing this question. <laughs> he said, just like we have, how we have Duvernay at punt return instead of the safe choice in pro I believe there's a lot more upside in having Tyson out there and taking a slight risk because of his explosiveness compared to our other backs who run like <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this guy, man. Compared to our other running backs who run like they have prosthetic legs out there. Uh, after all, I doubt Ravens are going 100% in practice lately with all these injuries, so it's looking like in-game experience is our only option for Tyson to improve. What are your thoughts? Hashtag team keep it clean. Yeah, I, I would love if they do, man, because I, I agree. That is such a great way to put it. Now, again, with with um, with uh, Latavius Murray, we do got to reserve judgment because he's new to the system. Um, but at the same time, just that explosiveness like you talked about. Yeah, it's the same thing. Do you go with the, the safe option or do you go with the guy that gives you that potential to take it all the way? Like you really think like think about this because and I'm not I'm not hating on Latavius Murray at all. I like Latavius Murray. Uh, and obviously rooting for him because he's a Raven, of course, duh. But do you think, honestly, that if the, the blocking would have been the exact same, everything would have been the exact same on Tyson Williams' big touchdown run, if everything was the exact same, do you think that a Latavius Murray would have gotten that touchdown? No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't have. And again, they're different, kind of, they're different types of running backs. But that explosiveness, that's Tyson all day. Well, Latavius Murray, he's a good runner, solid runner, but I feel like things got, he, he's just a, a slower runner. It's just that it's just not as much explosion from him, explosiveness, whatever. Y'all get the point. 
Um, so with that being said, I would love if they stuck with him. Because, again, it, like you pointed out, same thing with Duvernay versus Prochet. Prochet, his hands are a little bit safer than Duvernay's. A little bit safer. But he's not going to give you that explosive play. You're safe with him. You know, he ain't going drop to drop any punts or anything like that. But you're not getting no punt return for a touchdown with Prochet. Duvernay, you got that, that chance on kickoff return, punt return, all that stuff. So that's why I'm glad that they got Duvernay back there uh, instead of Prochet. So we'll see. I, again, I hope that they stick with Tyson Williams, but I just really do not think that they want to at all. Shout out to Graven.